All right, game one of our second semifinal. Andre Paria will start off serving. Return. First point for Andre Paria. Nice get. Yeah. That was a really good cross court pass. Went the wrong way a little bit. I wonder why Rodrigo is not going with his drive serve. It's kind of lobbing. Maybe starting off a little slow. Yeah, maybe feeling out Perea yeah. a bit. I feel like. Yeah. That's kind of what Montoya likes to do in his in his uh, quarterfinal last night. We saw him kind of get down about to a, f a five point deficit, like right, it was zero five, and then he'd start to dig his way back. So yeah. maybe he likes a little bit of that challenge. Maria looking really fast. I know he trains pretty hard. We'll be at his home club next weekend for the La Loma Open. He trains at, uh, now I forgot because I'm, I'm a little tired on this last <laughs> day of the tournament, but um, Centro Deportivo <laughs> Loma. And I went to proracketballstats.com. Shout out to Todd Boss, who I know is watching. He keeps a database of all the player matchups. Montoya and Priya have matched up twice before in their split, 1-1. One, one. Nice, nice. So this is the tiebreaker. Yeah, in their little series. Nice, that's smart, I like that. Stepping up and cutting the ball off before it bounces. That's really smart. You got to be aggressive like that when you get a an opportunity. Let's see if we can get an updated score for you. Having a little bit of trouble with our ref mic. So I'll get that in a moment. Score is 3 0, or rather 0 serving 3 as Montoya steps into the service box. Zero serving three. First point for Rodrigo Montoya, currently number one on the WRT with four titles of his own. Okay, scores 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Tied up. We got it right this time. <laughs> Let's 
skip from Perea. Puts Montoya in the lead. Rodrigo in the lead. He kind of started going to that drive serve. He's doing good. He just has to mix it up a little bit. Montoya is from Chihuahua, Mexico. A lot of racquetball players coming out of there. In fact, we had a crew of about four players that drove from Five. Chihuahua. Five players yeah. that drove up from Chihuahua. Alan Nitera, Ernesto Ochoa, Rogelio Castillo. Mm -hmm. Jaime Martel. And Javier Estrada. Javier Estrada, yeah, that's right. In a small car, too, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a small car. It wasn't like a van. Yeah. Um, but I love seeing the, the dedication from these young players. They're excited to come to events. They like playing on the World yeah. Racquetball Tour. Yeah. And there's a lot of players coming out of Chihuahua, Mexico, where Rodrigo is stationed. And um, also out of San Luis Potosí, where Andre Perilla is from. And we'll be there next weekend for the La Loma Open. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Nice get. Yeah, it looks like Montoya kind of found his groove now. He's like controlling the, the tempo and the pace a little bit. I think it's 5-2 with that one. Andre Perilla calling a timeout. We'll double check the scores and be back in a moment to see if Perilla can throw off Montoya with his timeout. Welcome back everyone to the WRT Lifetime Denver Open. I'd like to take a quick moment to remind everyone that next weekend we will be at La Loma Centro Deportivo for the La Loma Open in San Luis Potosi, Mexico. So nice. join us for that August 8th to the 13th. We'll be live streaming that event, of course. Jumping back into this match, we have Rodrigo Montoya and Andre Perilla. It's 5-2. Good get. Andre is asking for a hinder. Gets it. I, th I don't think Rodrigo is too happy about that one, but we'll <laughs> replay it. Nice. Rodrigo is looking really comfortable right now. Yeah, it looks like that timeout didn't do anything to throw off Montoya's yeah. game. Yeah, six serving two, and Andre really needs, needs to make a something happen here right now. He doesn't want Rodrigo to take off on a big lead. Skip ball, I thought. Yeah, it sounded like it skipped. Good call by the right. out. So they'll replay that replay. too. Paria not happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, on, on things like that, you you know, at this level, you never know what's going to happen, so you might as well just shoot. You know, if you hit him, you're going to get the point. And if you, you know, if you don't hit him, it's interesting though. We don't <laughs> we don't normally see so much emotion from Paria. I mean, he hit that ball afterwards. Yeah. Um, I would assume maybe he got a warning for that, but um, it's unusual to see that from him. So it seems like maybe he's a little unfocused right now with uh, Montoya's four point lead. Yeah. Oh, lucky crack. Point for Andre. Three, six. We got Oscar here in the chat box saying avoidable. Six, 
Green serve. Shot. Let's see if Andrick can get some points here. Three serving six. Three six. We have a nice crowd in the back watching. We do, yeah. Denver's come out for this first ever WRT event. Wow. It's tied out. We've had a great crowd here all weekend, and it's been nice to see the support. A lot of people were saying they were so excited that we came here. Yeah. Um, it's our first ever event in the Mile High City. And we hope to make it a reoccurring one. Yeah, I think we will. You know, everybody's uh, enjoying the matches all weekend. We had some really good 16s, some upsets. Yeah, we had a great draw. Yeah. Maria starting to turn things around. Three, Cheered himself up. It's 3-6 in game one. If you guys want to check out the draw, you can find it at worldracquetballtour.com, and it's also on R2 Sports. Two bounds get. No call by the ref. Toya re-kills it. Some people thinking that ball skipped. Referee called it good. Six, we just have to go with the ref. Nice pass. Seven serving three. 7-3 point for Montoya. So yesterday we saw uh, Mauro Daniel Rojas playing against Ro Rodrigo Montoya. Montoya defeated him 15-6, 15-10. That was a good quarterfinal. Montoya also took out Fernando Cuzbar from Argentina, 15-4, 15-2. It's really nice to see all these different countries in the draw. You know, you usually don't see that. And now we have, you know, people here from Argentina that are traveling, uh, Mexico, Costa Rica, now, yeah, Chile, U.S., somebody from Bolivia, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have uh, some variety and different representations coming out on the tour. and. I'm also also surprised that there's so much U.S. players. Um, yeah. Mexico has really been dominating. They have great juniors programs, so it's nice to see some other countries starting to step up. Like you said, Team Argentina was here, two players from Argentina. Yeah. And um, a couple of the players from the U.S. are starting to pick it up and saying they want to play more. Like we had Jose Diaz, who yeah. played Andre Perilla last night in the quarterfinals. He just graduated, and he's looking to stay focused on the pro tour for the next year or so nice and andre Perea also plays sebastian fernandez who is a young player out of mexico in tijuana yeah he's the 18 and under mexico national champion sebastian wow. fernandez We also had Gerardo Franco the current 18 and under mexico junior national champion He's seeded number six this week. And uh, he was knocked out of the tournament, though, by Andre Sacuña, who made it to the semifinals that we just watched against Jake Bredenbeck. Yeah, Andre is having a great tournament. Hello. 
Yeah, Acuna, this was his second time playing on the WRT, and he pushed his way all the way through to the semifinals. It's eight, sorry, five serving eight. Andre Perea is number four on the WRT. And he's been a fun player to kind of watch come up through the ranks. He's been playing on the WRT for the last couple years. We've watched his game adapt. And then Rodrigo Montoya started playing, um, I guess in the last year, more dedicated on the tour. And he's moved his way all the way up to number one and really shaken things up in the rankings. Yeah. Nine five. Time out from Andre Perea. We'll take a quick break as well. Don't go anywhere. There's more of the WRT Lifetime Denver semifinals coming up after this. We're ready to jump back into game one. It's 10-5, Montoya leading. We got a question here about Kobe Iwasa, who used to play or was playing a little bit of the WRT. I'm not sure when he'll be back or what's happening. I just heard that he's going to school in Canada, I think, like full time. Yeah. So he's still oh, studying. He was, yeah, he was on a mission, and I think he's still studying. I'm not sure what his plans are in terms of coming yeah. back to racquetball. Yeah, we'll oh. see. We'd love to see him back. He caused quite a stir when he was here. He won the Chicago Open. Priya is really frustrated, like he can't get his focus or get something going or he's mad at the ref, but he's um he's like kind of not playing to his game right now. Yeah, it looks like he's missing some shots, you know. Kind of hitting down the middle. His angles are not as good as they no normally are. A little bit of a break. 5-10. You can see the frustration a little bit. Five serving ten. But it's you know it's still kind of early in the match right now. He can still turn this around and come back. Absolutely. Second serve. Second serve. Rushing that shot a little bit. Trying to do too much with it. Ten serving five. Ten serving five. A little bit of movement now on the board, 11-5. One thing to note about both these players too, and it's true for a lot of players on the WRT, they're in different stages of it, but both these guys on the court are also in college. Balancing uh, school along with the Pro Tour can be certainly challenging. Yeah. I know that's sometimes why we don't see Montoya at events, whereas Andre Perea goes to school online. So he does his college online and that allows him a lot more flexibility but also forces you to be really disciplined. Yeah. Same thing. I, I think uh, Andre is just trying to kill balls that are way too high, you know, making making errors instead of just hitting a nice, nice ceiling ball. 12-5.
And Montoya just doesn't give too much in the expression, right? He plays really cool and collected out there. Yeah. 13-5. Lucky. Five thirteen. Good shot. All right, there's a point for Andre Perea. 6-13. Six, 6-13. And even if, if Andre doesn't win this game, you know, it's, if he gets two or three more points, just to kind of get into a rhythm, get a little bit more confidence instead of... Right, like like take something yeah. for himself into the next yeah, game and yeah. kind of start uh, start fresh. Yeah, just a little bit. 6-13. Because earlier, you know, you could just see his body language. He just almost didn't even... Yeah, you're right. There. But if he can get that away, if he can take that away, you know, he can he can still win this match. Six, serving 13. I'll replay that. Nice to serve a little bit. Green serve. Six, serving 13. Get. Oh, good angle from Montoya. Thirteen serving six. These guys are fighting to go to the finals, which will be live streaming tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, and we already know they'll face Jake Bredenbeck. Nice. Nice shot. <laughs> Got a reaction there from our crowd here yeah. at Lifetime Fitness. Thirteen. I'd like to see one or two points here. Right back in that corner, it's it's interesting to see uh, Priya so um, animated right now. And yeah. he is one of those players who trains so hard. He usually is really focused out on the court. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's kind of let Montoya <laughs> take control so far in game one. Yeah. Skit. Mm. Ball staying up high, huh? Little lucky. Yeah, we are in Denver, the Mile High City. So we've been talking a little bit about the altitude and how that's been affecting players' um, styles and the way that they're hitting, and I'm sure their endurance as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was tough the first day here. I mean, at least for me, I felt like you know, I was running out of breath and I couldn't even catch my breath, and the ball was flying all over the place, but. Two or three days later, you kind of get used to it a little bit. Start to make those adjustments yeah, and get yeah. familiar with it. Yeah. Nice serve. Wow. Mm. Called unavoidable. So then that would be a point for Perea makes it 8-13. Yeah, now Montoya not in agreement with that call. I guess it goes both ways a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 
Nice serve. Uh, called short. Skip ball. Another point for Andre, and this is what I was exactly what I was talking about. You can see the change now. Andre looking with a little bit more confidence. You know, he's probably going to start swinging with a little bit more confidence now, and that's going to help him. You know, 9-13, one more point. You never know. He can still come back. Well, Montoya didn't like your idea on that. He yeah. sides him out. <laughs> Montoya takes a timeout. Probably good. He got a little fired up over that avoidable call in point four Podia. That's right. We'll be back with more of game one of our semifinals, so don't go anywhere. The WRT is in Denver. We're back at the WRT Lifetime Denver Open. Montoya calling that timeout as he stepped into the service box. It's 13-9. See if he can close it out and send us to game two or if Padilla's going to turn things around. I want to give a shout out to all my people from Bolivia. I see everybody tuning in. A lot of familiar names here. Nice. A lot of good friends. That's Yeah. Nice. Love to have the support. You can watch the WRT from anywhere in the world. For free. For free. Yes. We do get a lot of viewers. Uh, I think our, our top three countries are Mexico, Bolivia, and USA for viewers. So thanks to everyone for watching. First game point for Montoya. And Doug, the reason for the timeouts being a little bit longer than normal is because of the broadcast. Sometimes we have to run some commercials and they take a little bit longer than than the timeout so we kind of have to wait for that to be over to be to go back into the, the match we're going to another opportunity here see if he can keep his focus he seems to be pretty annoyed with Acuna our referee yeah That was a tough shot. That went under his ar under his arm, and then I don't know how he swung it. Then <laughs> killed it. <laughs> nice get. Oh. Misses that shot. Kind of went for the wrong shot there. He, I think. That down the line would have been a little bit better. Even if you missed it, you know, just make a, instead of skipping it. Match point for Montoya. Nice shot. Catches that crack. Perea back in the box. He's not letting it go easy. Yeah, he's really holding on here at the end. Trying to take that couple extra points as he can, I'm sure, and take it into game two, like you said. Right. Montoya slowing some things down there by wiping down the court. 9-14. Lucky there. 10, 14. 10, serving 14. Ooh. I think everybody felt that one. Yeah. Took a little bit too much off. 14, serving 10. Third match point now for Montoya. Nice 
shot right down the line. Padilla holding Padilla back on. back in there, yeah. Yeah. Ten serving 14. Ten fourteen. Nice serve. Off the back row setup. Cross court. So he leaves it out. One more setup, nice and easy. And that's Andre's game. You know, he he'll move you around, and when he gets the setup, he'll take a lot off the ball and put it away. 11-14, and this is where Rodrigo is going to start feeling the pressure. You know, if, if we see Andre pull off one more point here, and I think Rodrigo is going to start thinking about winning or losing this game. Nice. Really nice shot. Perfect for a timeout. Yeah. Two equipment points timeout. for Padilla, yeah. Equipment String timeout. Broke. He's yeah. going to change out his racket. Grabs a new one there. Well, if you guys are watching on Facebook Live, that is the only place that we're actually uh, live streaming. We've had some internet troubles here at the club. It's hard for us to get it out on our website. So share with your friends that you're watching the WRT on Facebook Live. Go ahead and hit that share button and like it. And of course, keep the comments coming. We have it up here. We're all checking in. So thanks for watching. It's 12-14 now. So he's going to take a few hits now with that new racket. 12, serving 14. Oh, mm. that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Month. Montoya has like those crazy gets. He has those like interesting shots. He's fun to watch. We have some highlights of him up on our Facebook page and also on the WRT YouTube channel. You guys can check that out. Yeah, it looks skip like it's ball skip ball to me. Getting some confirmation from the crowd. Yes. We do have a nice crowd here in Denver. They've really come out. They were saying they haven't had a Pro Tour stop here in a while, and they were excited to receive us. So we hope to make it a long-standing tradition. Oh, nice. Good. Oh, doesn't make short. it. Good effort. 14 serving 12. So another game point so now like for Montoya. Six. Yeah. I've lost track. Timeout. He Time does out. have another timeout, but Paria thinks he took two. Acuna says he has another timeout since the last one was an equipment timeout. Mm. A little bit of discussion. I think the timeout's going to stand. We'll be back in just a moment with more of this everlasting game one semifinal. We're back in the semifinals. Rodrigo Montoya and Andre Paria. So I see some questions up there on the Facebook page. We can answer those in a moment. Let's let's see how let's game point number match. 17. Ooh, short That's serve. Good. I feel a, I feel a side out coming. Yeah, Paria has that tradition so far. Oh, and, and he closes it out. Game one with a score of 15-12. So somebody did ask, pretty sure you have to use all your timeouts before you can use an equipment timeout. That's not true. Equipment timeout, you don't have to use a timeout in order to do that because you have to switch something out. You're supposed to only change out the thing that you're supposed to change, though, right? So if you broke a string, you change right. the racket. 
If your glove is ripped, you change your glove, something like that. I'm sorry, glove is not a part of the equipment timeout. See, we're all learning here. Yeah. So we'll be back with game two in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Let's see if Andre Paria can answer back. We're back at the WRT Lifetime Denver Open, where Rodrigo Montoya won game one, 15-12, and we're jumping right into game two. I'm Laura McCormick with the World Racquetball Tour, and Mauricio Zelada is joining me on the mic, representing for Bolivia. Yeah. Shout out to the Bolivians watching. Yes. On the question about the grips, uh, some of them do change it to a rubber grip. Uh, Gearbox makes a really nice rubber grip. It's called a clutch grip. Uh, but actually, most of them are using the wrap, uh, the original Gearbox wrap. And I think a lot of them you know, really like it, including myself. That's the only one I use. I know Andre right now is using the, the wrap, and Montoya is using the rubber grip. All about personal preference, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And the WRT does play by the International Racquetball Federation rules. Those are a little bit different than the USA rules. Uh, but we play internationally to kind of keep everything underneath the umbrella of the International Racquetball Federation. They are the governing body of all things racquetball. They're the ones that are working on getting Ooh. racquetball into the Olympics, too. Nice. Montoya almost got hit right there. Well, Another rule fact for you, if we're playing by the IRF rules, since these guys are wiping down the court, the referee does reserve the right to ask a player to change their yeah. shirt if they think they're too sweaty. That's right. Some defense from Priya. Now Montoya really didn't even have to move much on that point. He, he, everything kind of came back to him in the center and he really controlled that rally. Next weekend, the World Racquetball Tour will be in San Luis Potosi, Mexico for the La Loma Open. And you can get details on the full schedule for the rest of the year at worldracquetballtour.com. But also on September 14th, we'll be back in Atlanta for the Grace Warrior Atlanta Open. Get an updated score for you as well. It's 2-0, Montoya leading in game two. Short serve. Nice get. That's a tough mm. call. Ref's thinking about it. Point. Gives him the point. Not, not an argument from Paria, so. Yeah. It it there's the argument coming. There's the argument. I think it misunderstood the oh, call. Oh, he thought it was going to be a replay. Yeah. That's, that's a really hard call because Rodrigo was still moving. He still had a few steps to take before getting to the ball. And, you know, it's hard to call an avoidable in a shot like that. You almost have to assume that, you know, it was going to be a setup. And that's what a referee did.
Nice, Rodrigo guessed right that time. Kind of took a step forward. Good read from him. He was way forward, he was by the front, by the front line. Four, serving zero. Another point for Montoya. Nice shot. Yeah, that's tough. Zero serving four. Zero four. Just gets that racket and pushes it right into the wall. Yeah, I think First. Rodrigo's reading all the shots from from Priya. Well, most of his shots are are uh, pinches right now, so he's kind of moving forward. I think four, it would be good for him to start hitting the lines a little bit more. Great rally. Crowd loving that one. Nice to give him a show too. We hope you guys at home, of course, are enjoying. And we hope you can make it out to a World Racquetball Tour event because it's different watching it live in person, right? Like the action, yeah. it's, it seems faster in person. Um, and we're certainly happy to provide you with the live streaming and you can watch it from wherever you are, but we always hope you make it out to a WRT event. The finals will be live streaming later today at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll start off with the singles final, and then we'll end with the doubles final. We already know Jake Bredenbeck is a finalist. He's been making his way back through the ranks after his injury. And we're fighting now to see if Andre Parilla or Rodrigo Montoya will be playing Bredenbeck in the finals tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Zero. I'm not sure if the ref's saying two or zero. Can you tell? I think it's zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice catch. Oh, what a get. Whoa. Oh. Like it's gonna be a tough call. Yeah. Replay, probably the only thing he can call. I think it might be time to ask Montoya to change his shirt. Yeah. I mean, every time he hits the floor, of course these guys are working hard, so they're sweaty, but it's looking really slippery out there. He slipped pretty really hard. A little bit of discussion between these two, the doubles partners. Yeah. Four, seven, two. <laughs> Four, two. Nice get. Get from Padilla. Skips it. Yeah, we've seen a lot of unforced errors, it seems like, from Padilla so far in this match. Yeah. Five, seven, it's going to make it 5 0. He could have sung at that, I think. I would agree. 
Timeout. Timeout from Andre Perilla. We'll take a quick break as well, but we'll be back with more of the WRT Lifetime Denver Open. We're back in the match with the WRT semifinals. It's Rodrigo Montoya and Andre Perilla. We're battling to see who will move on to the finals later tonight at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm Laura McCormick, and Mauricio Momo Zalada is joining me on the mic. It's 0 5. 0 5, kind of uh, a replay of the first game. You know, Andre is down uh, 5 0. It looks like Rodrigo's controlling this game just like he was game number one. Yeah, Rodrigo Montoya, number one on the WRT. And he's really come in and kind of mixed things up with the ranking. He dethroned Alex Cardona, who was number one for almost two years. Yeah. And we're seeing a lot of players start to not only adapt their games, so we're seeing the players who are regular tour players really start to develop their game. Oh, they're going to replay. And then we're seeing these young players start to come in and switch things up with a new game style and putting different pressure on the more experienced players. So yeah. it's always fun to watch the World Racquetball Tour. Yeah. There's always something different. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Every single tournament, there's something different happening, which is nice. Yeah, I love to see that mix up. Like every. Every draw, there are different. So you could see some of the same matchups, but everything's different. And the way these players move through the draw is fun. Right. We always post the draw on WorldRacketballTour.com and on our social media. So make sure you check out, check that out. We got a question here about Moscoso from Bolivia, Conrado. He's actually he's <laughs> he's been invited to a lot of tournaments. Uh, and from what I hear is that he he says he's going to come. He says he's going to show up. A lot of the times he's actually been in the draw, and the tournament comes around, and he never shows up. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure what his deal is. I know um, we've tried, and I think we're still trying to get him over here, but that nobody knows. Second serve for Montoya. Nice shot. Yeah, you know, in the past, too, we've gotten questions. Um, sometimes people hit us up uh, on our email or, or contact us on our website, and they ask how they can join a WRT event. And it's, it's open to everyone. We yeah, always have our up. events on <laughs> R2 Sports. There's usually a direct email to the tournament director, too. But um, you can sign up online. That's generally how we do it. But of course, we always appreciate your questions. But it is easy to sign up for an event. Yeah. yeah. And you know now there's, there's a lot of opportunity right now for, for new players, younger players that there wasn't before. You know, and that's uh, like, you know, speaking about Conrado, that's one of the things that he could take advantage of if he really wanted to play the tour uh, and any other young player that wants to come out and play the tour. I know there is a little bit of help with, with hotel rooms right now. There's always help with, with gearbox. You know, we, got, we have the bus that we, we travel and, and the guys don't have to pay for traveling. And, you know, they can stay on the bus if they want to so they don't have to pay for a hotel. Uh, so then that saves them a ton of money, you know, especially when, when they're getting started and, and they may not be making money playing racquetball, but at least their expenses are covered. So, uh, you know, right now it's a good time to for anybody that wants to play the tour to come and join the WRT with all the help that's, that's around. Yeah, and ask us any questions you have. We're always looking for for new players. I mean, and that's that's kind of our thing. We're working yeah. on the next generation of racquetball as well as strength, strengthening the sport overall. And it is so important to get those young players, like you're saying, coming out and playing the tour. We have 50% uh, off your entry if you're 18 and under playing in the pro divisions. So that's a big help. Like you said, hotel rooms, travel. Yeah, yeah. And there's a ton. There's a ton of players out there. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know about it. 
there's a, you know racquetball is huge in in Central and in South America and some other parts of the world, but you know nobody really knows what's happening down there. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to shed the light on that. We'll get a fresh ball out to the players. And one thing that, uh, you know, this is a little bit more personal for me, but one thing that sometimes bothers me a little bit is is when people talk about uh, racquetball dying or, or the tours dying or or why why is there two tours and and they, sh they should all unite and maybe work together, you know, and that's that's because people only see what's happening here. You know, they don't, they don't know what's happening around the world. And if anything, there should be, I think, four tours because there's so many players down there that we don't even, we can't even reach. Right. But they're just, there's hidden talent that's around the world that, you know, we don't, we, we can't get to. So we're working on that. And I, I think, you know, racquetball is huge right now. It's just hidden. We just have to. Well, because sometimes yeah, you, you have to yeah. think outside of the U.S., that's right? right? Yeah, and, 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 I, yeah. and I think that's a lot of times what people do. It used to be so big yeah. in, th in the USA, and now it's not. But it's huge. Like you said, in Bolivia, it's incredibly competitive. Yeah. There's so many players down there. Mexico, that's why we have such a large representation of Mexico on the WRT. Although we have a lot of events in the U.S. and Mexico, it's easy for them to travel here. That's right. But it yeah. is hard, like, to get Moscoso up there, you know, for example, from yeah, Bolivia. It's right. expensive for players yeah, to travel yeah. that far. So, yeah, and I've been, you know, I've been there point. to really small junior local tournaments, like a state junior tournament in Bolivia will draw 300, 400 players. They have to start yeah. on a Monday, and the <laughs> tournament insane. ends on Sunday, and they're playing all day. You know, so, and the cool thing about that is, you know, the government's, uh, well, the government puts a lot of money into, into the sport, into racquetball. So they're building clubs, huge clubs with 12, 15 courts uh, for free. And then, you know, people go and they play and they have schools and they have tons, tons of players. Yeah, it's nice to see that growth and development. So there's a lot happening here on the court. Hmm. So they got they got in each other's way. Perio yeah. uh, Perio arguing with Acuna, but it's not going to go his way. Kind of giving up a little bit, Andre. There. Yeah, he's definitely affected by by some of this this graphic too. I think. Um, but I think you bring up a really good point, Momo, and I think that's something that we should keep talking about, yeah. especially on the tour, on social media, more on the broadcast. Yeah. Um, because there is so much talent out there. Yeah. It's going to make it 9-1, a timeout for Andre Perilla. We'll take a quick break as well. It's 9 serving 1. Looks like our graphics person made our way to the scoreboard. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. We're back at the WRT Lifetime Denver Open. We've been talking a lot about racquetball and its growth in the sport too, and we appreciate everyone's feedback and comments on the w on the WRT Facebook Live, kind of sparking some things to come up here. Yeah, we're talking with Mauricio Zalada, and if you don't know, I'm Laura McCormick. I think everybody knows Laura. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about um, like having two tours, yeah, and yeah. I, you know I think one of the things that is important is a little bit of that competition mm -hmm. and keeping it keeping more players actually going to events yeah. and keeping them playing and giving them more opportunities that way too yeah 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 you need to have competition you know it's like it, all the other big sports you know they have they have more than two tours they have three four kind of tours and then yeah well, yeah and they all they don't have a problem with each other you know they and they, stick, you know, they, they keep growing. So, uh, and like we said earlier, there's there's a ton of players uh, that people don't know about. You know, they or most people that kind of see the sport dying or they see the tour dying is because they're only thinking about one country. They're not looking at the whole world in general. I had the opportunity to go to the World Championships and the Pan American Racquetball Championships, as well as the Junior uh, 
World Championships mm -hmm. uh, hosted by the International Racquetball Federation. And that is so exciting for me because, yeah, you see a big representation of other countries, players yeah. who I don't see on the tour. Yeah. Um, and it's great to see how much talent, like you're saying, there really is in places that you just, you just don't see because they maybe don't make it to the tour. Right. Um, we just don't know about them yet. So it is nice to shed light on that. And, and it is fun, like you were talking about how huge the players, you know, the, the tournaments are in Bolivia. Yeah. And you can see that when you watch the Bolivians play and you think about yeah. how much it took for them to get here yeah. and the level that they're at. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's one really cool thing that the WRT is doing. Starting to have tournaments in Mexico, you know, the Cats Ooh, in nice Chile. We're working mm -hmm. on some really big ones in Bolivia with, with, a, with a friend here that's actually watching online, Benjamin. Uh, we're going to do some, some big tournaments down there. And, you know, I think it's just going to follow other countries that are just going to kind of start following. And the best thing to do is, you know, if we can't get the players here, let's just take the tour over there. Sure. I think that's the best thing we could do. I'll go. <laughs> I'll volunteer for that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, things are heating up on the court. It's 12-1 in game two. Andre Puria has struggled a little bit in this in this semifinal. We don't normally see this from him. Um, he has played Rodrigo Montoya before. This is the third time they're matching up. Their record right now is 1-1. Mm -hmm. And as doubles partners, I don't know, it's just interesting to watch him. He, he normally um, is a little bit more solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see just the body language, you know, he's yeah. just not, not comfortable 30, right now. 31. He's almost like a step short in every every time he gets a set up or he wants to shoot the ball. Like right there he just, you know, a little bit slow. Not the normal Andre that we that we see. Yeah. Match point now for Rodrigo Montoya. Good ball, and that's going to do it. All right, it's 15-1 then in game two. Montoya won game one 15-12, which means he'll move on to the finals tonight.